In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of thermochemistry. So let's start with this. I have a beaker of water, and I want to know how would you raise the temperature of the water? Well, you'd probably stick it on the stove, right? Stick it on the stove, add some heat, and that would raise the temperature. Um, I could stick it in the microwave. Um, the microwave is going to raise the temperature. A um, couple different ways you can do it. So either way, we're going to be applying heat. And that heat is then going to raise the temperature of our water. So let's go through some definitions. The first two definitions should be familiar from physics. So kinetic energy is energy of motion or movement. Potential energy is stored energy. So in physics, we have the example of a ball on a hill, right? probably seen this example before. So if you have a ball on a hill, you've got, let me just draw this out really quick. So we have a ball sitting on top of the hill here. And at the top of the hill, all of our energy is potential energy. At the bottom of that hill, when it's moving, this is all kinetic energy. Hopefully that is familiar from physics. So we're going to be still looking at kinetic and potential energy in thermochemistry. It's going to be a little different, but kind of the same idea. So heat, You've probably heard heat before. Heat is the flow of energy from one object to another. And we always go hot to cold. Heat stops flowing when both objects reach the same temperature. So that's kind of an abstract idea. So if I have um, you know, a beaker of water that's at 100 and I have another beaker of water at zero, if I had some way of connecting those two beakers, they would level out at the same temperature. So let's say they level out at 50. Okay, so all of the heat goes from the 100 degree um, beaker to the zero degree temperature beaker, and it equalizes out around 50 degrees, let's say. So that's what's happening. So when they're equal, the, the heat stops flowing. There's nowhere for it to go because they're the same. So heat and temperature are often confused. So temperature is a quantitative measure. Remember, quantitative has to do with numbers, measure of how hot or cold something is. And most of the time, we're going to be using the Celsius scale. Another scale that you might see used in thermochemistry is called the Kelvin scale. So with Celsius, zero degrees Celsius is where water freezes. Um, zero Kelvin is absolute zero. So absolute zero is where things just completely stop moving. That's the coldest theoretical temperature. So zero Kelvin is absolute zero. Zero degrees Celsius, water freezes. And then, of course, we have you know Fahrenheit, which is all over the place. So the reason we don't use Fahrenheit is because it's a really abstract um temperature um, scale. So like 32 degrees Fahrenheit is where water freezes. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is where water boils. We make it a little bit simpler by setting zero where water freezes and 100 where water boils. So it's just a little bit more user friendly. All right, so if someone were to say, oh, don't let the cold in. So you're in a nice, cozy log cabin it's freezing outside someone opens the door and if they were to say don't let the cold in they would be wrong because the cold doesn't come in actually the heat from our cabin is going to be going outside remember our temperature or i'm sorry our heat energy goes from hot to cold so the cold that you're feeling is actually the absence of heat it's all the heat that's left and that's what you're feeling so the next time someone says, don't let the cold in, you can be like, well, that's not right. And you can explain why. All right, so we have a couple more definitions. So we talk about a system. A system is an object of interest. So a system can be anything. It could be a glass of water. It could be a building, anything. A system is just an object of interest. And the surroundings is everything outside of the system. So if I had a glass of water, the system would be the glass of water, and the surrounding would be the, the room, the air around that glass of water. So exothermic is when heat exits the system. 
heat is uh, heat energy is released. Endothermic is where heat energy enters the system. So heat energy is absorbed. So an easy way to remember this, XO, exit, endo, enter. Right. So here is a equation that we're going to use frequently with thermochemistry. And that is Q, which is our energy in joules, is equal to MC delta T. So if we have a positive Q value, that means energy is flowing into the system. It's an endothermic reaction. If we have a negative Q value, energy is flowing out of the system. It's going to be exothermic. The units that we use for energy are joules. The M stands for mass in this equation. All right, the M here stands for mass. And the units of mass are just going to be grams. All right, C stands for specific heat. The units for specific heat are joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And specific heat is the amount of heat energy needed to change the temperature of one gram of substance by one degree Celsius. Each substance has its own specific heat. So you've probably experienced this before. Um, different metals take different, amount, different amounts of heat to change the temperature. Inside computers, they have a heat sink, and the metal chosen for that heat sink is done because different metals have different properties and again, the amount of heat energy needed to range the temperature uh, depends on that specific heat value. So again, the physical properties of every substance is going to result in a different specific heat. So the smaller the specific heat, the quicker the substance heats up. The larger, the longer it's going to take. And finally, delta T is a change in temperature. And for um, for the change in temperature here, the units are going to be in degrees Celsius. So to find delta T, we'll take the final temperature minus the initial temperature, and that'll be equal to delta T. All right, let's look at an example. It says a 15 gram piece of iron absorbs 1,086 joules of energy, and its temperature increases from 25 degrees Celsius to 175 degrees Celsius. Calculate the specific heat of iron. Well, there's a lot of information in the question here. We're going to go through and first pick out all of the pieces of information. So remember, the equation that we're going to use is Q equals MC delta T. Okay, well, hmm, I don't see a Q value, or do I? Well, it says the Q, the energy, is 1,086 joules. The mass of our piece of iron is 15 grams. Just kind of pulling this information right out of the question. It's telling us the, let's see, the temperature, the initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 175. And remember, delta T is equal to final temperature minus initial temperature. So 175 minus 25 equals 150 degrees Celsius. And the question is asking us to find, so we found our change in temperature. We're trying to find the specific heat. So we're trying to find the C value here. So let's just plug in what we've got. So we've got 1086. Our mass is 15. We're trying to find C. And then delta T is 150. So to get C by itself, we're going to end up doing our 1086 divided by our 15 times the 150. And when we do that, we get 0 0.48. And our units for C are joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And really quick, just to wrap this one up, if you notice our Q value is positive. So remember, when we have a positive Q value, 
This is going to be an endothermic reaction. If it's endothermic, it's going to absorb energy. And that's pretty much thermochemistry in a nutshell.